Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Life with B3 podcast with your girls, LaToya, Sasha, and Shelly Vinson. This is where we talk about this beautiful life we have with God, music, family, and friends. And today we are super, super excited because our special guest is our very own sister. As you guys know, if you follow us on any type of social media, LaToya Kathleen Vincent just got married. Woo! <laughs> she is married, y'all. And she is married to the handsome Anson Dawkins. So we want to welcome them to the podcast today. It's Mr. and Mrs. Dawkins now. We want to welcome them to the podcast. Thank you. We are so, so, so excited for the both of you. And today we're just going to be talking about um, finding love again. That's the topic of this podcast. Um, so please, please, please share this with somebody that you feel like needs to hear it, but it's all about love today. Latoya and Anson, if you guys could please just give us the backstory about how you guys actually met and then how you guys started talking again, present day. Well, it started back in 1990-something <laughs> uh, in Atlanta. Back in the day, they used to have these Thanksgiving concerts, and they would last maybe one to three days, and it was at the Atlanta Civic Center. And they would have, like, every gospel artist known to men there and I remember this particular year, commission was going to be there. Yeah. They were on commission number seven. You know, <laughs> so the King of Glory was out. That was the yeah. same. But we were so excited because we haven't seen commission um, before. Our three older sisters seen them before uh, in concert, but we haven't. So I was so excited. And I remember that particular night I had on a cross color coat <laughs> and tan or something. I was so excited and I thought I just looked so fresh, right? So I'm like 15, 16. Uh, we go to the concert and for some reason we like stayed around after the concert was over. But I remember there was a young man who was the roadie for commission at the time. And he mm -hmm. saw my sister, my our oldest, oldest sister, uh, Tony in yeah. the audience. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to meet her. And we had a mutual friend that introduced them. And then uh, the young man was like, oh, well, let me introduce you guys to the Dawkins boys. So he introduced us to Anson and his brother, Eric. And we were like, oh, like, I just thought anybody associated with commission was just like, oh, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a rock star. So I was like, okay, you know, but it's crazy that connection with that young man and our sister, Tony, like the next time commission came in town, they were in concert with Carmen at Six mm -hmm. Flags. So mm -hmm. I remember, I, I think I had another cross color outfit that I wore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cross colors. I think uh... it was cross color. But me and Tina, I remember we wore like matching outfits and we were so excited about going and we got a chance to hang out with Commission and you guys and get on all the rides. We didn't have to wait in line because they had some special mm -hmm. passes where we could walk right to the front. <laughs> it's so hard for us seeing some of the saints from our church, you know, hanging out with y'all. And I feel so cool. I was like, <laughs> <"Ooh, right now." laughs> hanging on the rides and. And then from then on, we just kept like staying in touch. Like at some point that young man was out of the picture and mm -hmm. anytime Anson and Eric came in town, we just would hang out. It's so weird. I mean, now looking back, we know that it was the Lord, mm -hmm. but uh, we've just been friends and family for like 30 years. Yeah. But I met, yeah. met Anson at 15, 16 years old. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah. wowzers, that's crazy. So what was life like for the both of you 
um, in between the time that you met to the time that you all kind of started talking more seriously together? Well, for me, um, life was very, very interesting, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Uh, of course, doing recording uh, with Dawkins and Dawkins and mm -hmm. writing and doing stuff for other people, as well mm -hmm. as becoming uh, starting to be a, a worship pastor at, at a church in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Seattle. Wow. Uh, I had a couple of kids and uh, so went through went through a divorce. Uh, mm -hmm. As well, and and the such a this is such a, such an interesting thing, the way that the way that God works through uh, through our our failures, our faults, mm -hmm. our our uh, wrong choosing, a whole mm -hmm. you know, because the free will is a, is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, God will let you do uh, let you do things, you know, mess up on things once, mm -hmm. twice. He'll let you mess up, yeah. you know, and, you know, I feel like uh, God blessed me in the sense that uh, and showing, showing faithfully how mm -hmm. he uh, could show up. So I was married twice mm -hmm. uh, in that um, 30 year, 30 year period mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, felt like, you know, even in the midst of still recording and, and, and being a worship pastor and, and mm -hmm. going through the process of that, um, feeling like, you know, how, how is God going to, how's God going to, going to redeem this? Wow. Uh, it became one of those things where I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I was always just like, oh yeah, he got this down. I, this is going to be <laughs> amazing. This is going to be yeah. beautiful. You know, uh, there were times when I, sat down and I was just like, you know, at home by myself mm -hmm. and thinking, you know, I have my, I have two daughters, mm -hmm. two daughters, and uh, this is, this is it. You know, this is what it would be. And I was learning how to be content with that. Um, but staying, staying open. If, you know, if God, you know, had something uh, special waiting for me, then, mm -hmm. you know, I was going to get myself to a place where I was ready for that. And I was ready to make a decision wisely and mm -hmm. uh, counsel. So um, it, it the, the life that I had between for those 30 years mm -hmm. uh, was, was a very, very adventurous one. So <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, and then with me, um, you know, in college, I ended up getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Son, my second year in college, I was there on a track scholarship. And I remember kind of after that, you know, feeling guilty mm -hmm. uh, for having a son out of wedlock. Uh, but he was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me because mm -hmm. uh, I feel like in me raising him, he raised me. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when, you know, I had already been writing, but mm -hmm. that kind of how V3 started, you know, out of uh, me getting out of school, you know, we were able to focus on V3 and writing and uh, then we go on to record. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time, though, that process, though, I remember still trying to force a relationship that God didn't want me in. And that was mm -hmm. with father. And I think it was because when you grow up in a home where you see two parents, you know, who love each other the right way, you want to mirror that. And I really wanted, you know, my son to have two parents and grow up with two parents. And, you know, I forced that thing, you know, and there was even a time where somebody gave me a word, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> From the Lord. Hey, you know, this and this and this. And I think sometimes when people are close to your situation, you know what I'm saying? They're just going to say, you know, something, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, I remember after getting that prophecy, he kind of looked at me, well, you got your word, you know, so what you going to do? And I kept feeling within my spirit that it just wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that he gave me enough courage and strength to say, hey, I can't do this anymore. And mm -hmm. it took a long time. Mm -hmm. um, 
even out of that, you know, I still was in, you know, several relationships that I shouldn't have been in. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until 2015 where I was just like, I'm done. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I just got so exhausted and I felt like I was living beneath my privilege. Like God had so much more for me. But just like Anson, I learned to be content. Mm-hmm. What I had, I had a huge family. You guys know we have three older sisters. Yeah. So there's six of us, you know, all of my nieces and nephews, my son, you know, my parents, our church family, all of my friends. I was content. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point with me that I was like, God, if it never happens for me, I will be okay. You know, mm-hmm. it's not going to change. Me and you, mm-hmm. we still we still don't have our relationship. Mm-hmm. It is it's gonna get stronger, and I'm just gonna you know just keep living until his return. You know, so <laughs> I was you know I was okay. You know, I was content, and I was I felt like too I had to get to a point where God could trust me mm-hmm. because I was just you know I felt like I trusted him. But I kept assisting him in that area of my life. I felt like God needed my help mm-hmm. in his relationships. And God had to show me, you know, that you need to trust me, period, and everything. And so, yeah, and I had to earn his trust. And yeah, so. <laughs> yes, wow. You guys said so many good things in there that could like take us other places, but. <laughs> <laughs> one, thing, one thing that you guys both said was that you found contentment. And yeah. there are so many um, single people out there and they feel like um, they may be dealing with loneliness. They may be dealing with um, self-esteem issues. They may be dealing with um, just questioning God on, is this going to happen for me? And how was the process for you both on truly finding that contentment? Well, for me, contentment was a was a process. Um, mm-hmm. You have to get to a place where you uh, accept the fact that um, God has God has things already worked out in the future. He's there, yeah. basically waiting mm-hmm. for you to get to the point where you are. Um, you are okay with his reality, with the reality that he's had, that he has set up. Um, and once you start to become okay with, with God's reality, then you start to be able to say, okay, what is happening right now to me, with me, around me, is what is supposed to be happening. What I need to do is look for, look and see where God is moving, look and see where God is. God is actually doing something and then partner with God in that process as opposed to working against God mm-hmm. and saying, all right, I see God is probably, God's doing something over here, but mm-hmm. this looks good right here. I think I can, I think, I think we can do something over here, God. This is, you know, yeah. as opposed to saying, hey, God, let's do something with this. Mm-hmm. You know, me saying, hey, God, if you're working right here, can I can I hang with you right here? Can I do this with you? Because I believe that uh, once you once you kind of set your set your affections set your affections on the things that God has for you mm-hmm. and His heart for you, and knowing how, knowing that He loves you more than you love yourself, mm-hmm. it becomes one of those things. Ah, you know what? I think he got a better, I think he's got a better picture, you know, and, and one, of, one of the things that I, um, that was, that was, has been really important to me is remembering that God sees all, he's omniscient and he knows all, he sees all, mm-hmm. he's got all knowledge, he sees all the angles, he sees all that, he sees the in, out, up, down, he sees all the angles at the same time. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a particular picture. I don't see what's happening down the road. I don't see what's mm-hmm. happening over to the left or to the right that is going to influence uh, influence that my life or my relationships. I need to stay focused mm-hmm. on the one who sees everything from every angle. 
keep my eyes on him, then that would allow me to be at, at, at any point in time in the right place, in the will of God, mm-hmm. until I get to that place where I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm keeping my eyes on the one who sees it all, who knows it all. I'm, I'm always going to be frustrated. You know, I'm going to be frustrated regardless of what good comes into my life because I've had good stuff happen in my life mm-hmm. and still for something else. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be something better. No. What's happening right now is what's supposed to be happening, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't look or feel good. Yes. I mean, that's 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 one of those one of those things. You, If it doesn't feel good and if it's not good yet, then that means it's not done. You're not at the end of the you're not at the end of the story. Right. It's all going to work together for good. It's all going to work together for good. So ultimately, you know, we have to wait until we get to that place where, oh, this is this is good. And I, I have to say, I haven't found a good thing. <laughs> This is it. Yeah. And they're watching you talk. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, I'm looking at both of y'all watching each other talk. Y'all look just smitten. Yes. yes. Well, I think no. because, um, oh my God. Okay. Can't even talk. Can't even get a talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the important thing, too is having the right people around you, mm-hmm. um, the right people praying for you. Um, mm-hmm. Because I've had, you know, besides my family, my sisters, my parents uh, praying for me, I had a couple people that I talked to in private that I knew, you know, were prayer warriors and, you know, just stayed connected to them uh, during the process of finding contentment. Um, there were, some ladies that would speak into my life that helped me, almost helped bring healing to me, to my esteem. Mm-hmm. Um, with those relationships that I had in the past, I felt like, you know, pieces of me were just everywhere, if that makes sense. And so God knew the right people to put, you know, in my circle to build me back up again. Mm-hmm. Um the right friends, you know what I'm saying, that I could call if I was feeling some type of way. Because that's the thing in the past, if you're feeling some type of way, Mm -hmm. you know, you operate and make decisions based off of how you feel. Mm -hmm. Right. I had to get to a point where, okay, if I'm feeling lonely, okay, God, you know, I go to your word. I know I'm never alone. Mm -hmm. You said that you're not going to leave me nor forsake me. So using his word to remind me, you know, even if I'm feeling this way, this is how I can deal with that feeling Mm -hmm. instead of calling this person Mm -hmm. or reaching out to this person. Because just because I'm feeling this way doesn't mean that I have the right to put that on someone else, Mm -hmm. you know, and ruin their life. (laughs) Potentially. You know what I'm saying? So, I found contentment, like I said, with the people that were in around me, God put around me to pour into me, to pray, you know, to tell me what thus said the Lord, uh, people that would tell me the truth, regardless mm-hmm. if, I, if I wanted to hear it or not, uh, because they loved me, you know, yeah. and it was God loving me through them, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, so I found contentment with that. And then I found contentment um, as I served, mm-hmm. I kept myself being busy, mm-hmm. you know, Doing whatever God wanted me to do um, in and out of the church. And in doing that, I found contentment. I found peace. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it felt mm-hmm. good that my name wasn't in anything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Could nobody yeah. say, I saw Toya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Babe, did you did you in 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 looking at that contentment piece and and not calling, you know, that that person or, or mm-hmm. whoever? Mm-hmm. Did you find sometimes that you you did you did make that call? <laughs> and you know, how did that, you know, how did that feel? Because I've done, I've made that call mm-hmm. or I've made that, I've made that visit. Thank I mean, thankfully, I, I didn't I didn't step over over lines, but it was just mm-hmm. like I'm I just want some company. So, mm-hmm. you know, making that call, how did that feel? Yeah, we gotta talk more about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
that happens. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's yeah. real. I, I, when like I made that decision in 2015 to totally, you know, surrender that area to God, I like removed people from like my social media. Like I didn't follow them anymore. I removed their phone number because I know myself. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I may say, hey, you know, yeah, I'm okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I didn't trust myself at all. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, yeah. I totally deleted the numbers, the the um handles mm-hmm. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And um what I did was when I got to a place where I felt stronger, and it took like a couple years, mm-hmm. I was able to reach out to someone that I used to talk to, Mm -hmm. but I felt really empowered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all I did was just check in on them. How you doing? Whatever. I kept it very short. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. I pulled back out and that was it. You know what I'm saying? No, I get that. that. That's a blessing. And I, you know, I had, I also made sure I was telling like my sisters, I was honest. Mm -hmm. I had a circle of people around me that I was honest about. And I always told them, you know, who I was talking to, whatever. So they would hold me accountable yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, yeah. I, 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 I found that <laughs> I kept some things, I kept some things open and the possibility of moving into a certain, into a certain, you know, I could explore that if I wanted to, because I feel, again, I feel like we have, you know, we have free will. Mm-hmm. God gives us, you know, opportunities. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like, Am I, is that, it, could it possibly be? You know, you got to get these things in the back of your mind. Is it, could it possibly be that person? And exploring it, but having, having a, a mindset to say, okay, God, I'm listening. I'm listening. And if you, if you say, if this is not mm-hmm. from you, I had a situation before we, before we connected yeah. that totally just, you know, I was wondering, <laughs> and it was totally shut down. You that's, know, like, that's what we need to talk about. You know, it's totally <laughs> shut down. Well, you know, that's why you have those people in your life mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that happened to me too. Mm-hmm. It was two mm-hmm. occasions mm-hmm. I felt like God was releasing mm-hmm. me, and these people ghosted me, man. Yep, yep, got ghosted too. And so. I don't even, you know, use that term. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a young people's term, but I was mm-hmm. like. They just, I think I got ghosted. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a and that's a hard thing to deal with. It's it's hard for for your ego mm-hmm. because you're you're looking. You is this some is that wrong with me? Because mm-hmm. I you know I I you know I put my you know I put my I have my game going. You know, like, <laughs> you know this got to be you know uh, if anything I'm gonna be the one to say ah, nah. Yeah, yeah, and God is saying no, (laughs) but it was more so. uh, This, you know, the situation I had, it just, just out of you know, it was just gone. Like, what, what, hey, (laughs) nothing, you know, (laughs) just nothing. So, uh, it's so interesting because you know, they they showed up the other day on my social media. Congratulations, (laughs) so happy for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, great, you know, and that was it. But yeah, I, I, I like I said when I had, there was a point in which I, I got rid of numbers. I got rid of, you know, I mm-hmm. this all social media. We're not, we're not going to be communicating. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it was a, it was a process for of me. It was a process for me, and I, I'm grateful mm-hmm. for. The things that I I had to walk through, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it makes me very appreciative of what I saw and had in you when I started talking to you, and we started you know moving in that direction because you showed and you expressed in so many ways how mm-hmm. how you cared about me and how um, how how you wanted it to be. You had a picture. You had mm-hmm. a. Business that you wanted for the relationship that God had for you and everything lined up the way that you you saw it saw it being and I was just like okay well it's just naturally me just, <laughs> I'm, I'm your you know I'm I'm God's man for you you know 
I didn't know at the time, but it was just like this yes. stuff just started lining up, and that was just a a beautiful confirmation to the to the both of us. Yeah, we need to hear it for finish this podcast. Mm. Hallelujah! Oh my God, oh. people! Podcast <laughs> about to be quick. We're about to be done. Newlyweds. <laughs> really really oh. Can't keep it together. The fire. Yeah, is burning. Burning. All right. <laughs> he's like going ahead to like they didn't ask. Right. He's questions. like, okay, oh. let's just let's just finish. I okay. think he's trying to answer the question. Can I? But. Did you answer Latoya as far as like giving advice to singles? You were you were answering about waiting on that. Oh, okay. You can edit it. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be. I didn't that yet. <laughs> okay. Well, that's supposed to be at the end. They're oh, supposed. Yeah. Okay. Toy and Anson, um, we just want to hear the story of how you reconnected hmm. yeah. and yeah. how that led to your marriage. Yeah, I, I remember seeing uh seeing you guys at we were in Cincinnati. Uh commission commission was doing a reunion thing at, at the uh PAW convention. And I wasn't going to come initially, but then it was like somebody was like, "Oh, you need to come." And my mom and dad were there, my family, everybody was and it was like, "Uh, you need to come. You're part of this commission thing, you know." So, mm-hmm. and uh so I just I, I decided last minute, okay, I'm getting my ticket. I'm going. Went, saw y'all. Y'all had a white and y'all was looking good <laughs> and everything. I was like, okay, okay. So, and I didn't really, you know, I didn't really, you know, just besides hugs and hey, good to see you guys, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that was, I think that was in August. And then a few months later, it was like November, I think, October, November, and I, I was, I was seeing little, you know, social media things with, with you and with Charles and everything. And I was, see, I was like, hmm, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you know, you ride your little bike and everything. You just had a little good time, and you use some of our music and everything. I was like, well, hold on, hold on now. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I reached out, you know, started reaching out, liking stuff. And then I, I, you know, reached out and just like, hey, you want to, uh, <laughs> you want to uh, kind of connect, you know, and, you know, talk on the phone or whatever. And, and, you know, she consented, you know, hey, I, yeah, let's, let's talk. And we were supposed to, we were supposed to talk, but she, she was pretty busy. She was a pretty busy lady. Yeah, Shekinah, our eldest niece, uh, we were preparing for her baby shower. So I remember he reached out at the end of October and we were like trying to prepare. This was like 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, I just kept saying, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. And I, I think I text you and... I just felt so bad because I didn't want you to think I was putting you off. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. night before, I think it was November, might have been 13th. Something like that. Um, I called him finally. And I was so tired. Mm-hmm. I was so tired. Mm-hmm. And I, was, I don't want him to think that I'm just putting him off. So I called. And we talked for like two hours. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it was, I think it was, I thought it was easy because we pretty much know the same people and we haven't talked in a while. So I'm like, you know, it was easy to talk to Anson for two hours. I'm like, I, I could see that, but I did pay attention to that. I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. to talk to, but then I figured after we got off, okay, I'll talk to you in a couple months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in a couple months. And then I remember him texting me the following day. Hey, you know, I'm not doing anything anything today if you want to reach out and you want to talk. And I was just like, <laughs> I looked up the phone like, you know, okay. So, <laughs> I remember going to the shower and I text him that night and told him that I was tired and that I would try to call him on Monday. Because I was in school too at the same time. So I, I was busy. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I reached out on Monday and we talked for a long time then. Mm -hmm. And it just kept happening. Yeah. Conversations. He was very intentional too at the beginning in sharing his world with me, even Mm -hmm. though I was kind of like, why is he doing this? You know what I'm saying? Like he would, um, because Anson's a runner. So he would be out sometimes and the weather would be nice. So he would, you know, do a little video clip and then send it to me. Hey, Toya, it's such a beautiful day here in Washington. <laughs> Just wanted to share my day with you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but he would send me the most beautiful text. And one time he sent me one and was just referring to how we've always been in each other's lives. And he said, I can't really understand. You know, I think he said something along the lines that you've always been in the picture, but slightly out of the frame. Mm -hmm. And he said, just so you know, it's always been your turn, Mm -hmm. you know, even though others haven't acknowledged it. Boy, when I read that, I just started crying. Mm-hmm. And I remember calling Sasha and was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I paid attention to that reaction. And Sasha was like, it's okay, Toya. It's okay to cry, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think from then he had me. And I kept telling him that I wasn't going to let him get to me. Mm-hmm. But um I just I believed him because he told me regardless, you know, if this if this works out or not, we are still going to be family. Mm-hmm. And I believed him because sometimes people will say that and then the relationship just fizzles. Yeah. But he was yeah. like, so he was very intentional about, hey, I want God to be in this. If he is not in this, we are not going to force it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very yeah. intentional about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And making that the the first time I was. I was, we were getting ready to do a show in Houston and I said, Hey, I'm going to come through town. Why don't we, you know, why don't we connect? I'm going to, you know, and it was funny because Shelly came as well. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she was like, hey, my sister's with me. And I was just like, accountability. Okay. Yeah. Accountability. And I was just like, okay. But it was, you know, it was so late uh, when I finally got in and time and I, it was just a short time. We were only there, you know, I was only there for, what maybe 18 hours or mm-hmm. something like that and just the time we spent together and had our first day mm-hmm. and yeah. everything just went that we were both tired but everything just went so smoothly and mm-hmm. uh, i remember you know the first just knocking knocking at the door and you you know you coming out and the look on your face it was just like that like this kind of like Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And and it was just a real, it was, it, it was like we were, it was like that we were in our, our new world, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just us. It was just us. And yeah, it was uh, just us, but it was like, we were, we were in our own separate spot. I mean, I knew Shelly was in the room and everything, but we had our own thing going. It didn't matter, you know, that we were tired and all that stuff. And and that kind of that solidified for me that oh yeah, this is there's something. There's definitely something here. There's definitely something here we can we can work with. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and she was really into me. Really into me. I'll just put it that way. She was share. She was yeah. She was she's very into me. She shared a lot of a lot of uh, intimate things with me that you know that she probably wouldn't. You know, she wasn't going to tell anybody else. But right at that first time, she divulged all this stuff. You know, it's like it's like she said, "Here, I'm gonna dump all this. I'm gonna give you all this, and then you're gonna decide because I ain't I ain't got time." to see if you're going to be, I'm not going to put on this show, this charade, and then this is not me, and you find out later. She laid out everything, and uh, it was very interesting. And, and, and you know, that that night we had our first, we had our first kiss, actually, mm-hmm. which is so, it was so strange. <laughs> we were like, you know, this is the first time we get together. It was just like, okay, this happened. And mm-hmm. it kind of said something, 
you know, we our guards were down, mm -hmm. but we had established, we also had established in our hearts with, you know, we have, we have uh, boundaries, we have mm -hmm. uh, things that we're not going to do, uh, mm -hmm. We're, we're going to also be open to be uh, to be affectionate with each, each other. You know, from Jump Street, we're going to be we're going to have this affection towards each other, but we're not going to um, let we're not going to run roughshod. You know, it's not just going to be we're going to be doing anything. We love yeah. God first and foremost, yeah. and we yeah. want to honor God with our relationship. And we did that, mm -hmm. and we we held to that. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's an awesome testimony. For a long, for a long time. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy all the time, but it was we were intentional. Mm -hmm. it yeah. was, when she started following love, especially. You know, yeah. When she was when she wasn't strong, I was strong. Mm -hmm. Which was most of, not most of no, oh. no. when I wasn't strong, she was strong. <laughs> I know it's it's definitely hard because I had a long distance relationship as well. Mm -hmm. So I told Latoya, watch it, watch it now, <laughs> watch it. Cause she would be <laughs> she would be so excited to go to Washington to see you. And I was like, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, you yeah. know. So I said the the deeper you go into it, the harder it's gonna be for you guys to be away from each other because you guys are just gonna be like, we just want to be together at this point. Yeah. Um and I remember like Anson what was a crucial part to me was like he started getting involved with your family. Yeah. And that was so amazing to me because people very rarely like take that on, mm -hmm. but he made a point to connect with us, to start to get to know us individually. Mm -hmm. um, he would message us, share things with us on social media. And I thought that was so, <laughs> I loved that. I was like, wow, he's really like, wow. He's really <laughs> like a brother for real, you know? Yeah. So I really loved that. And he started sharing pictures of the wedding rings that he was looking at for you. So what led to that point, Anson, where you decided, okay, now, now it's time. Wow. Um, what, what was really, uh, what was really big for that was honestly my, when my, when my father passed away mm -hmm. in June of that year, um, and Latoya came, came to Ohio to mm -hmm. be with us, and I wasn't I wasn't expecting her to come or anything, um, but she came, and she although she got COVID while she was there, or she mm -hmm. or she brought COVID, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but she was there, and she wanted to be she wanted to be supportive, mm -hmm. and I felt the support even though she couldn't be right right there that started the process of me saying uh this is uh this is a keeper i i gotta i gotta have this person in my life uh but the thing that really just that that locked it down was uh she flew out and surprised me for my birthday and oh. with the help of my my daughter and my daughters and and my future son-in-law they uh we they took me to a restaurant and she walks in and was just like, I was, I, and I told her the other day, I said, nobody's ever done anything like that for me. And it just meant wow. so oh. much to me for her to be there and, and for that to be like a thing. Oh, I'm, you know, and she never said anything. And even we talked earlier that day and, you know, I was telling her what I was going to be doing. Yeah, they're going to take me some restaurant or whatever. And you know she's talking like uh you know like oh can we have fun we'll call me later you know <laughs> <laughs> and you know and but when she came and spent that time with me for for my birthday uh, I you know it was like clear you know I had to I'm I'm starting to look you know I got to get this stuff together and uh, you know a whole lot of stuff was going on at this particular time and I want to do I really wanted to do it. Uh, for Thanksgiving, I wanted to come down for Thanksgiving with the family and do it with the family and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's 
things just didn't work out. And I was just like, okay, well, I guess it's not supposed to happen then. And uh, got in the ring. And of course, I, you know, sent, sent yeah. pictures of things that I was looking at, <laughs> which was funny because you know, I sent things, you know, sent pictures and y'all were like, oh, yeah, that's really nice. She's going to love that. She's going to love that. And then we later on, we started looking at looking at pictures and we're just kind of trying to get get an idea and we're looking at stuff and I was showing her like pictures of the ring that, that I was really looking at. She's like, no, I wouldn't really like that. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so but it was it was fun. It was a fun process and mm -hmm. you guys helped me out a lot. And I I was so grateful. I was I was grateful as well that you you guys, you know, welcomed me in mm -hmm. uh in such a warm way. Um uh, mom and dad. Um mm -hmm. The nieces and nephews, everybody, especially the nieces. The nieces, you know, <laughs> oh, they love and give me. <laughs> oh, but it was it, it was such a such a fun, uh, amazing um, time that I got to you know getting to know the family more, mm -hmm. and um, and I wanted to be when I asked Dad about. Um, about marrying marrying Latoya, I, you know, I didn't say, "Hey, I, I would like to marry your daughter." You know, um, I said, I told him, I said, "Hey, um, I would like to know if it would be okay if you would you would uh, allow me to be a part of your family." Mm -hmm. And that I felt like that was more important than me saying, "Hey, you know, I want to marry your daughter. I want mm -hmm. you. To, I want to be a part of your family." And you know, losing you know losing my father was just like I I got a you know I got a dad you know so mm -hmm. it's been really a blessing. Oh, that's so yeah. beautiful. Oh, we're still praying for your strength too. Yeah, yeah, that is good. Yeah. That is beautiful. That was so sweet. Thank you, babe. That was beautiful. I don't even know what to say after that. <laughs> All right, podcast over. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Um, Latoya posted just one photo of you guys at the wedding, but I tell you guys, to all our listeners, it was the most amazing wedding yeah. I have ever had the privilege of being a part of. Um, mm -hmm. my own wedding was, was the most beautiful to me, of course, <laughs> <laughs> but sure. this was, I mean, we laughed, we cried. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. like every emotion of love you could possibly feel was like, you felt it at this wedding. It was just like yeah. Yeah. so yeah. amazing and it was so beautiful and it just felt, I mean, it oozed the both of you because you both are just phenomenal, phenomenal people. And I've never seen Latoya this happy mm -hmm. in, in all my life. All my life. <laughs> never seen her. Best because it was an answered prayer. Mm. Yes. You know, we've been praying for Latoya because mm -hmm. she's just such a good person, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, come on, Jesus. You know, I'm <laughs> impatient. But I had to give it to God, you know, let go and let God. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted her to be with the right person, you know. Right. And um, I think that's what made it so much more special because we're like, oh, Jesus really came through. And <laughs> like I said, she's never, she said it too. Shelly said it. She's never been this happy. I've never no. seen her like this. So, mm -hmm. you know, to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. And it's like a pure, it's joy. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. from the inside, like yeah. down in the belly joy. It's yeah. like <laughs> that type of joy that she has. And like, I see it on the both of you. So um, it's just, your story is just amazing of all the things that you all went through. It just prepared you guys for each other. It laid the foundation for what God was going to do with the two of you together yeah. Um, and I know some amazing, amazing things. You guys are both phenomenal mm -hmm. writers and arrangers mm -hmm. and singers. So I know some beautiful things are going to come out of you guys' union, even creatively. And I'm yes. looking forward to that. Um, you guys just nurturing each other's 
gifts as well. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited to have a new big brother. Yeah. I'm just so excited for the both of you. So Toya, how did you feel like on your wedding day when it was actually happening and you were putting on the clothes and getting your makeup done? Like, how did that feel for you? Um, I almost felt like it wasn't my life. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm. I, I remember when we were sending out the invitations that Anson asked me, he was like, you know, how do you want everybody to feel when they're there? Mm. And I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I want them to feel romance. I want them to feel love, of course. I want them to feel joy. I want them to feel God. And then I told him, I said, I just want them to feel everything that we've been feeling mm -hmm. from the beginning, mm -hmm. because it literally felt like it was just too good to be true. Mm -hmm. That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, we were in some really bad relationships. <laughs> At least I was. <laughs> Me too. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, it's just something about being in the will of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have his hand, you know, upon you, upon the relationship. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, God was just blowing our minds mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that day, I woke up. Sun was shining. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Sasha was the first person I talked to that morning. And then her room was right by mine. So she came to my room and we just embraced each other. Mm. <laughs> and, you mm. know, I was just like, oh, my God, you know, and I, I felt like I didn't have any tears to cry. I was, you know, I didn't have nothing left. I was just excited and I was ready mm -hmm. and got to the venue and, you know, was just excited seeing everybody getting ready and just excited to be there. You know, our moms were looking good. Mm -hmm. I was just like, look at everybody, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. um, my dream team came through uh, with my hair and makeup. The dress was beautiful, you know. Um, so once the wedding started and I was in the back waiting to come out, I just kept hearing people screaming and I was like, what is going mm -hmm. on out there? Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to get out there. I really wanted to see Anson so bad. And um, I just remember, you know, first walking out with dad and hearing your song playing that I wanted to walk into. Mm -hmm. So hearing it and just in my mind, like, this is happening, all the stuff that I visualized, like mm -hmm. this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And they opened up the doors. And I remember before they did that, I looked at my dad and I was like, dad, thank you for just being the greatest father to mm -hmm. me. And we both just are, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I didn't think I had any more tears left. But then when I opened the doors, me just walking down with my father, but then mm -hmm. seeing the faces of everyone Mm -hmm. that loved you, mm -hmm. that, loved you mm -hmm. that prayed for us, mm -hmm. that wished the best for us. Yeah. Everybody looked so good, but then it was just genuinely happy for us. Like there wasn't anybody in the audience that I was like, mm -hmm. why they you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was happy to see everybody yeah. that was there. And that was one thing too we prayed for. We prayed that God would have everybody there that was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And we that happened so and then walking towards you mm -hmm. and you looking at me woo, and you look so good <laughs> <laughs> and then he was crying mm -hmm. oh my it was beautiful to see i it love looking at the groom yes mm -hmm. walks down <laughs> it was so special and to see my son yeah. standing up there and my girls now mm-hmm yeah, they go for crying too. So it yeah. was it was just mm -hmm. so special. Yeah. I just had a good time. Like I I was ready. I didn't have cold feet. Nothing. Yeah, I was ready. Wow, that's so beautiful. I'm happy that we were all there to experience it, and we're just so overjoyed over the moon for both of you, Thank Sasha. You. Yes, yes. It was just beautiful. We're still talking about it. 
Yeah. It's <laughs> one of those things. It was like, you know, hanging on every word, the vows. Mm-hmm. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Grown man crying. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You got my husband. It was just. <laughs> I think everybody's husband got got. <laughs> Everybody got got. If you was there, you got got. You yeah. was crying. We yeah. were just hanging on every word when your mother sang. It was just yeah. everything was just so beautiful. Oh, but anyway, yes. But what advice would y'all give, you know, to other singles waiting on God? What advice would you give them? And I, yeah, yeah, I. I think I think we can give advice on singles waiting for God. We were we were talking joking the other day because we were like, uh, we're not giving no marriage advice. We just got married. We just, <laughs> yeah, no, we we can give us advice to singles <laughs> that, that are waiting. Um, you know, one one thing that that you remember as you as you are waiting is that the love that God has for you is far greater than any love mm-hmm. you're going to experience. It has to start and end with him. So having having that love in your life and accepting accepting who God has called you to be, mm-hmm. that he loves you. Yes. Whatever state you're in, wherever you are, mm-hmm. he loves you at that place where you are. And being able to say, okay, God, if you love me, I know I'm I'm worth loving. I'm worth loving if you love me. The highest of the high, if you love me, you made me, you know the worst, you know me at my very worst, and you still love me. It it helps, it helps in those moments to be able to wait and say, okay, I know that God loves me. So if there's somebody he has for me, my prayer. My prayer is, and it was it was my prayer as well, as well. God, give me somebody that's going to love me in the same manner that you love me. I don't want somebody who, of course, you if you don't know God, and you know, you don't love God, you know, God, you haven't experienced God's love for yourself, it's hard for you to love like love in that manner you're gonna it's gonna be you know you're gonna you're gonna rest on uh, on an erotic love or or just a friendship type of love or you know you're gonna you're gonna rely on your on your feelings um but once you get to a place where you are open to that agape love that god has that is is unconditional Mm -hmm. that loves you wherever and however you are it's it, it has the, the ability to settle your spirit. Mm-hmm. It has the ability to settle your spirit, but you have to accept that. Mm-hmm. You have to find a way again to be okay with God's reality because that's really the only real thing there is. His reality is the truth, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's, you got it. You got to lock into that. Um, and and as Latoya said, having folks around you, having folks around you that love you and that believe in you and that are able to speak into your life and to hold you accountable in a way that says, hey, God's got something special for you. Mm-hmm. You don't want to mess up that whole thing by delaying it, it you know I, I believe we can delay what god has for us preach yeah you know and mm-hmm. and that delay doesn't mean that's never going to happen but it just it just means that as even as i look at latoya and i look at the time that you know the time that we're given that, that we're given as men and women on the earth and i'm just like ooh, i wish i had more time you know i'm taking advantage of this time but at the same time mm-hmm. The more you, the more you uh, delay following God's plan for your life, then mm-hmm. the shorter time you have to be actually in God's in God's plan for your life mm-hmm. to be who He wants you to be with, to be found or to find that person. You are spending so much time looking and mm-hmm. trying to make something happen. Right. 
miss, you know, you start you start delaying everything. I don't want to take a long time. To... No, that was good. Um, yes. mm -hmm. I also want to just say be open. Mm -hmm. That was the, <laughs> the <laughs> for us uh, mm -hmm. is be open. Um, be open to how God wants to bless you and um, however he wants to bless you. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we have an idea mm -hmm. of how things should look, you know, how things should go. And that's why God tells us in this world to trust him with mm -hmm. all your heart, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, trust him and don't lean to your own understanding, mm -hmm. your own way of thinking, you know, because his thoughts are completely mm -hmm. different. I mean, sometimes I look at him and I'm like, I cannot believe I'm married to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Us knowing this long, each other this long, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing I met my husband at the age of 15, 16. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I do the same thing. I was not oh. like it's 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 it is one of those things. You <laughs> you could be to think that speaking of people who are waiting, mm -hmm. to think that you could be possibly looking at the person that God has for you. You're right. You could be right around them. Mm -hmm. Totally, they're they're a little bit out of out of view, but mm -hmm. they're they're all they're always right there. But just mm -hmm. just allowing God to show you over time, open up your understanding, open up your eyes, so you can see who it is that God really has for you. Because we mm -hmm. got we got our own little mm -hmm. we got our own little glasses on. And we see the way that we want to see. Exactly. And we think because they look like this and they're shaped like that and they got this, or they, you know, they got this much money or they, you know, they sing like that. You think that this might, this is, you know, this could be the person. But God wants to show us. He wants us to be able to see through his eyes who he has for us. And to be, and to be, and be able to accept. This is the person I'm looking. I look at her sometimes, and she just be looking at me like, "Why are you looking at me like that?" You know, because mm -hmm. I'm looking at her because I'm just like, "This is like I'm just so happy that mm -hmm. I have to be. I get to spend time with you. You know, we're together, and we get to hang out together, mm -hmm. and we get to do stuff together. We get to go for a walk later together, even though you don't want to." <laughs> We get, to, <laughs> we get to hang out. We get to do so many things together and laugh. And we get to laugh together, which is Aww. such a cool thing. Mm -hmm. so I like to laugh. I like to have fun. Mm -hmm. And Latoya likes to laugh and have mm -hmm. fun. So it's just like we are, sometimes we just get to laughing about the dumbest stuff. <laughs> we just laugh. It's like, for, you know, we laughing for 15 minutes and, and all of a sudden, we, you know, we chill, and all of a sudden, one of us start laughing again about that same thing. And we sometimes we be laughing about laughing, you know, why are we laughing so much? This is funny, you know. But anyway, I'm just. I'm, you're just I'm, happy. You're happy. All right, you guys, you guys are both just beaming with joy, and we just thank you guys so much for taking the time to share your story with yes. others because it's going to really help someone and bless somebody um, because a lot of people have lost hope about yeah. finding love again. And a lot of people have lost faith. Um, mm -hmm. So we really appreciate you guys sharing your story and giving others hope um, mm -hmm. because not everybody's waiting for a husband, what we talked about mm -hmm. before, but everybody's waiting on something. Yes. So your story also just inspires us to wait on the Lord to find ourselves um, busy doing yeah. kingdom work and seeking yeah. the kingdom and really being busy doing God's will. And mm -hmm. he's going to add everything that we need. Mm -hmm. um, so we thank you, Latoya and Anson. You guys have been lovely guests. Thank we you. appreciate you guys so much. We appreciate all of our listeners um, for um, listening and subscribing. Please make sure that you um, continue to share this podcast. If you haven't subscribed already, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel um, to see the actual visual and you can um, uh, 
of subscribe to us on all streaming platforms. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there. It's This Life with B3 Podcast. We're going to leave you with Psalms 8411. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly. So continue to seek God first, stay in his will, and he is going to give you the desires of your heart. We thank you. We love you, everyone. Till next time, we'll see you.